What is up, everybody? Broken City Artist. Well done. Yeah. We're leaving that, by the way. No redo. No what drafts. Is this? this is episode 16. 16. Yeah. I haven't been here in a while. Yeah, you haven't. You've been out. This is Gannon. This is Mike Jackson. This is Adam. That's my dog. Can't see her. Um, and this is uh, the first podcast with all of us back together post WGI Finals. Oh man! So let's. I know some of you guys that are watching this watch uh, are involved in that whole world. So how's how's that whole thing? First, explain what it is for those who don't know. Uh, it's performance percussion, um, both on scholastic, like high school kids, and uh, and college age kids. Um, it's crazy. It's like a cross between. Cirque du Soleil with, with drums, Blue Man Group, um, any that ranges from you know something that's more theatrical like that to uh, to just performance art to legit um, orchestral type percussion, concert percussion. It's uh, it's crazy. Composition for yeah. drums, they call it the battery, all snares, tenors, basses, and then also melodic percussion of all types. Um, but anyway, the the sort of Super Bowl for that, I guess you call it that, right? Oh yeah, it's, yeah. International championships in Dayton, Ohio, every year. Um, it's just it's a spectacle. It is like the, the Super Bowl of the activity. Yeah. So that has yeah. transpired, and and the last what? How many months leading up to that? Five, four. Yeah, the season starts in January. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. anyways, we're all very excited and and about how it all went because. Uh, Broken City Percussion um, got a bronze medal, and it's really exciting to have. I mean, you decided it was OCI before. Mm -hmm. You were like, "Dude, let's let's make it Broken City." As a result of Broken City artists and everything we've been talking about, and not a ton changed because you've been doing things the way you've been doing it for forever. Um, but some cool nuances changed in terms of just more involvement from more kind of a f official involvement from myself and Hannon and some collaborative stuff there but along, it's, it's along been a blast. with uh, just more focus on um, I guess just trying to be happy like stay on the road of happiness mm -hmm. you know, it's not a, it's not a destination but um, it's a good process yeah like just dropping things in your life that are toxic and mm. um, things that you that you don't enjoy, try to surround yourself with with activities that, that hopefully allow you to pay your rent, um, that bring joy, mm -hmm. um, that you know you, you you can sleep well at night knowing that you you did something productive. That you um, there's a little bit of philanthropy in it because you know you're a teacher, you're working with with college kids and high school kids. Um, so there's, there's a, a satisfaction there. But I think just kind of weeding out all the stuff that um, that weren't, works like from the heart. Yeah. And So that was that, part of the impetus, or that was part of what changed kind of this year I for you? I think that's what changed, is that I just had more time to, to make things exactly how I think they should be. And then it's and it's not just me. It's a it's a combination of people and, and you guys included that are sort of doing the same thing. I'd say you guys have probably be, been doing that longer than, than I have at this point. But uh, I think that is a, a it's a it's a nice step to have in your in your life. It's a nice uh, plateau to get to in your life where mm -hmm. you're not just trying to make ends meet, where you can pull back a little bit and say, you know, what? I don't need to do that. It's you know the extra cash is nice, but it's yeah, because you were teaching a lot of different schools and doing yeah, you, I think you lose a little bit of yourself and, and you just you're doing like a daily grind thing, and I'd much rather sacrifice, um, you know, not necessarily stability financially, but some luxury, yeah, just to really enjoy the day. You know, it's, it's, it's just <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. that single like you wake up in the morning or you go on like. Yeah, you're stoked when you wake up. Yeah, like I gotta go to this place, and I gotta do that, and I gotta write this thing, and I gotta do this. And it's, 
it's just a cool place to be where you can just it's it's risky too you know because i i didn't have um i didn't have a backup plan i just kind of dumped some things mm -hmm. and a you know, significant chunk of, of income yeah. just on faith like yeah. all right here it is yeah <laughs> it's just now it's uh there's things that are going to have to happen um that are kind of a, a slow build to you know greater greater get down the road that it's there's not going to be a quick fix it's going to be this is going to be you know a couple years of struggling so that you know i have uh I just have a greater time just waking up. You know, it's yeah. not, it doesn't feel so. Yeah, to, I mean, to bring this full circle, I mean, we, we've been friends for, you know, over 20 years, and, um, you know, I, I was in Mission Viejo, Drumline, and that's how we met and stuff, and, but it was really about a year and a half ago that we reconnected, and really we're kind of on parallel um, journeys in a way, and, you know, me being really passionate about you know, I guess being more mindful about why I do what I do and which things that I do in my life as an artist and as someone who is an artist for a living, you know, making the necessary compromises to pay the bills and, and just monetize what I do um, so that I can keep creating as a career. Similar things were happening with me. I was, you know, dropping different things, making different choices that weren't necessarily about, um, moving the career forward, but really moving uh, moving my life in a direction where I was doing things that were more about, uh, you know, purpose and meaning, and I wanted more more significance, and, and just cared a little bit less about success in the eyes of the world, or the eyes of, you know, even my own perspective on what that what the definition of success is. I think that's... And when we came together... Right, like, all that is is attracted. Like when you... Mm. If you're drawn to that, there's a magnetic thing when you feel that somebody is, is doing that. Yeah. You know, and... That's the true luxury. Right, yeah, and it's separate from, you know, well, how much money do they make doing that? Um, mm -hmm. I don't even think that's, that's a thought. Um... When you when you're around somebody like that, that's that's uh, driven by just doing things that make them happy, like regardless yeah. of what it is, if it's you know a, a rock climber or a, a musician or whatever, there's, there's something that like we want to know that story. Right. Like when I'm around people like that, it's like oh, I, I want to talk to you. I want to tell me about that thing. And the great irony or or maybe paradox in that is that when you're when you approach stuff with, from a place of uh, deep personal passion and legitimate enthusiasm that's based on what you really love and, re you know, that's infectious, but it also, it, it get, I think, gets you the rewards that you were looking for maybe in a different way before. So to bring it full circle, I think when you, when you said, how about we just dive in and, and change the name of OCI to Broken City and really kind of you know, do what we can to to take all these ideas and, and these changes in our own personal lives and and apply you know a holistic approach to the art to the art of what you're doing and just put it all together. You know, you you talk about being in the activity of of this percussion ensemble world and and how there's there's sort of an underlying pressure maybe to go after winning. And and then that's never really that's never been your approach, even though that's an inevitable part of it. It's like in talking to you and being close to your process, even though I know you have, you've this has been your process all along. To be a witness to it and to see how bringing our heads together and making it something we actually talk about, as opposed to something that maybe you're doing just in your head and it drives everything you do. Um, it's been amazing to see that like. That's why this is a little bit of a celebra celebratory moment, is that, you know, last year, for a variety of reasons, OCI placed, what, 17th I or something? I think 17th. <laughs> yeah, so to go from 17th and then have this, this switch of perspective 
um, amongst other things, getting some different people in the group and all this stuff coming together and then to go from 17th to 3rd in the world is an awesome thing. And I think it's a direct result of that mind shift change of just like, let's, let's do something that feels I think like it has some value beyond the activity itself or something. Yeah, like the, the, the thing about that, just, just being competitive, being successful competitively, is that it was it was all it all happened in one weekend, and so I think it masked the the, the true feeling of like joy and elation that that it just affected people and that yeah. it it connected with people and the feedback was so amazing um, that it, it almost I almost get uh, like uncomfortable because I don't know how to process it because I mean obviously you know there's the thank you and uh, it means a lot yeah. and then it, it starts sounding it starts sounding a little contrived like, con- or something? yeah contrived where you know thank you it means a lot but then it's just my it's my own um, like inability to express at that point so it's almost like a script it's it's a weird thing to process and, I know and what you mean. yeah after being after being, uh, after kind of digesting it for a week, um, and it's been a busy week, the drum corps started the, the day after, yeah. um, but been able to process a little bit that it's, it's, that was the true success, that, you know, the, the competitive success was, it was all kind of mixed in there, like this casserole, but I was able to extract that men- mentally and a week later and realized that you know it didn't matter we could have taken 17th again right and um i mean it you know there's obviously it's nice to be recognized and the medal was part of of being recognized yeah it's it nice was more an official it's a little cherry on top yeah but like a kind of a quantification of all the comments that we received mm-hmm. so it's it's a little abstract from an actual human being saying hey I love that you guys did connected and I, I felt it and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like that means way more than you know a number on a sheet. And I think um, when you're in that whirlwind, when it's actually happening, yeah. you can't separate those two things. And it feels like, oh, we're happy because we won, or we're happy because we took you know whatever place. It's just, I think it's <clears> like <throat> let me throw this concept at you at both of you guys, but just like when you when you do something that, that and you put your entire self into it and you it's a lot of heart and it's a lot of hard work and it's a team it, there's so many people involved in making that happen all all the various members and and um, uh, it's it's almost like all of that leads up to if it leads up like in this case to like a, a bronze or, or like a, some sort of like placement that you can kind of tangibly go like whoa and you know that every step leading up to that was like an authentic step. It just means so much, you know, because it's like it is that like pat on the back thing for for a job well done, not like a oh yeah we placed because we were trying to place. It's more like this is absolutely the most valuable like a like tangible result to an end of the season. Yeah. Um, in my absolutely by far like without even like second guessing it mm-hmm. That's um, awesome. it's really cool yeah which it's it's because of the story yeah. and everything that led up to it and it goes back years you know I I, I was part of a, another organization um, RCC which is a, a beautiful organization and I love those people um, and there was just a, it kind of, I was at a place in my life where I just wanted to, I wanted to try something different. Yeah. I wanted to, um, I thought I could create like another voice because yeah. like what RCC does is it's, it's totally them. It's, uh, uh, Sean Vega and the team, like they have their own voice and own identity. And it's, it was so strong, like without me, that even though I felt part of that family and you know, I'm sure you know, my voice worked its way in there yeah. somehow, I felt like Man, this thing, it doesn't need me to exist. Like I can create another voice, which 
I've always felt like in the grand scheme of things that the more variety and the less homogenized an art form is, the better it is for fans, experience, um, just taking that in as a, as a spectator, that variety is important, so. Yeah, you don't want to see, you know, Picasso and Jackson Pollock try to figure out how they can both be involved in the same thing. Right. You right. want them to do their things as different as they are. Is that a, kind of a grand way to sort yeah, of explain it? Yeah, I appreciate the <laughs> parallel to Jackson. <laughs> Vega and Jackson and Pollock and the... But, but it's just anyway, like a very easy um, thing to grab. You got like two very different ways right. of doing it, and sometimes trying to mix the two isn't as good as separating them. Right, and it, it is like a parallel path thing, which that's that conversation's come up before, where like you're rooting each other on, and you respect what's going on on both sides. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not on the same path, but you're like looking over and going, "Nice job, guys!" And totally. you're staying focused on what you're doing. Yeah. And they're all different kinds of artists, and I think. Um, you know, this term is can come across pretentious, but being a visionary type artist, it just means that you sort of see a whole thing in your head and you go you set off on your path of, of thousands of choices going after a whole thing. Um, and it, it's a discovery process still, but I think you being knowing you and knowing that you are a visionary type artist who also gets in there, doesn't know what's gonna happen. You do a little bit of both, but when you have a vision, anybody out there watching, if you're the kind of artist that has that sort of approach to the arts, where you have kind of a vision approach, you do need to sort of, you know, be the author of your own destiny or the master of your own destiny and kind of allow yourself to, to be at the helm of something. And I think that's kind of what you're doing with Broken City, is you're kind of at the top with a vision and then you're bringing in other artists with their own skill sets and, organizing it all and to do everything I don't know how to do <laughs> right. yeah, that's the thing is what's pretentious about the idea of a visionary is that there you think of some sort of like a, you know a, a, I don't know authority figure in, in a bad way or somebody who's sort of on a high horse but that's not really what it is it's just I don't a yeah, way of creating and that's tough even like just hearing you say artist, visionary, it's so hard to, like, to hear those words, especially when to some people it's just drums in a gym. Yeah. Um, it's just, I you think, gotta redefine the words. Right. I think it's just, uh, it's like, this is what I know how to do. Or, this is what I, I, I attempt to learn everything about how I do it. it it's, every year is, I don't feel like I know everything. You know, every year is like, here we go again, you know. You gotta reinvent yourself. You gotta reinvent, you know, what you're so you're not telling the same story over and over. Yeah, are using a template. Um, right. People start templates to are bad. <laughs> um, but that's a, that's the a scary part too. You know, the chaos factor every year. But um, yeah, it's, I guess it's it's tough to hear that. Cause again, I don't know how to process it, but it is like in in you know I'm a human being, and this is like my life. So it might be a small little dot, you know. Um, significant to the world yeah. but i think if everybody no matter you know who you are or what you're doing if everybody makes what they do have a feeling or a sense of importance yeah then i mean the world's a better place i mean we all have to we should all look at ourselves as as creative contributors to humanity like no matter what we're involved in and in a sense i mean that's what the show is inevitably about too, the show cage. Like, where it ended up with, you know, one person in the middle of the floor kind of going like, all right, I'm on my own, that's not a bad thing like that. It is kind of representative of the thing we're talking about. It's breaking through your own barriers, mental, perceived, real or not, that's, you know, that's the cage and it is a very personal thing and it's a personal statement kind of collectively expressed and it's been awesome to be able to do that and I mean it wasn't it was it seems like only a few weeks ago that that ending came to be and we were in there on the piano and yes. figuring it out and it came together in like 10 minutes and then all of a sudden a week later we were you were you know choreographing the ending and we performed it that night 
Yeah, he performed. That's right. He performed that night. Was and, a we week got, later. and we got kicked out of that school. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. I mean, that's a whole other story, but. I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, one of our staff members got fired from that school from, wow. from that block. Like we had one block and a school just... Wow. Intense. Yeah. Yeah, so to explain it, we were here in this this studio back over on the piano, figuring out what the any mic was all like. I've never seen you so excited and sort of in vision mode. And I was just like, all right, I'm just... Tell me what you what you're thinking, you know. And I started playing some chords from that song, Mother Father, and, and rearranging things, and talking lyrics, and figuring it out, and and guiding it along. And I'm like, all right, that's it. And then what was it? It was a medley of two of your songs. It was yeah. um, from here, I'm on my own. Or from here, you're on your own. Yeah. And then Mother Father, and I wanted to combine them. And they're two totally different like feels. And sonic landscapes. Yeah, it was more the lyrics from from here you're on it. Yeah, um, and then putting that together it was totally exciting. But, but yeah, and then we had that rehearsal, and yeah. we threw that together. Um, Hot that day. <laughs> and uh, you know the guy who worked at the school, um, he'd been there for like four or five, maybe I think even like six years. Oh he'd been there, and. You know, he had brought his own equipment in, he had gotten like, you know, things donated to the program and there's like definitely like this macro greater good happening there at this program. And the administration got one complaint from one neighbor and That was it. He you know, heads a roll. <laughs> and it was just such a it's such a funny thing. And then um I, I saw like a couple days later I saw that, that Dave Grohl letter that he had written to uh I forget the it was a like a I, I remember was, saying for school. It, it was let the kids pl practice. Yeah, let the kids practice, yeah. and that you know, because they were getting noise complaints. Right. right. They were trying to have like, you know, this, this band thing going, Money. and they were getting noise complaints. And he had written a letter on behalf of, of the musicians, saying, "Hey, this is this is how, this is good that these kids are doing this. Basically, like you know, I mean, you can read between the lines. Thank God they're not out doing something else. Yeah, sure. You don't want them to do. Right. At least they're doing this. And it got me thinking about that situation. It's like. Man, how short-sighted, like how myopic of an administration to not see, like, okay, you got one complaint, like, we can try to mitigate that, and, like, we can figure that out. Yeah. Um, but to just throw away the greater good, but these are youth, I mean, these young people, like, learning just about how to be a team, about how to, like, put your heart and soul in something. Yeah. Be a musician, be an artist, be creative people, just, and, you know, contributors to to uh, you know society and they just folded with one complaint it's just so such you know, a it's corporate behavior and it's just wouldn't happen with the football it was, program it was <laughs> guaranteed. Right. it was a little saddening like it was like yeah. and then you know this the, what the cool thing about it is a staff member was like you know what I wouldn't have it any other way it was worth it wow and that's cool it's really cool attitude and I, it was sad to, to hear about it happening but like what we, it's it kind of showed me how what we do is so fragile and we have to be thankful for, for everything and those oh, yeah. those schools and those you know visionary admin people who see what we're doing and like oh yeah Makes I see what you're doing allow like, for it I'm gonna go the extra mile and help you guys out and mm -hmm. give you a facility some place you can go yeah you know what's interesting about that it's like that was the day that I was tuning like. You were tuning the mixing drum the sets. toms and tuning the drum sets and just taking the master fader and going like cranking it up hearing what it sounded that like that has a habit of getting shut well, down well little did you know <laughs> you do tell that story <laughs> I was playing at the NAMM show and I hadn't seen Adam in a long time he reconnected and it was like four I go let's jam yeah, I got this room was for Bagheera for Behringer and so we had our own little room that's our that was my song that's our that's Mike's we, gotta go the song we played yeah, you finish your story okay okay, okay, okay so mind. anyways um okay. I'll make it quick. So I, I go, let's play, let's jam. And all day, you know, the guys with the little, the decibel meters have been coming around. I don't know if you guys know the NAMM show, but every manufacturer of every instrument known to mankind is at the convention center in, yeah. in Anaheim. And it's like rooms and rooms and rooms. And some of the bigger manufacturers 
have these booths that are like pretty big. Or, you know, this one was huge. Like it was a huge mini clinics, mini demonstrations. Exactly. Yeah. Like so yeah. all week long, he's like mm -hmm. in there, and they're playing. It's a band playing, and there's guys walking around with decibel meters, going like, "Are you over 95 mm -hmm. decibels or whatever?" You guys got one, you know, like one warning, two warnings, yeah. or whatever. So. I walked in not really aware of that because I wasn't involved in NAMM that year, but yeah. you were like getting paid to play every day. Yeah. And he's like, dude, you want to jam? So well, was, the whole room was set up for that. Yeah. People would come in and play. We were supposed to be playing and showing people the gear. You I know? sat in on the drums. <laughs> so he's playing the drums. And well, first what I did is I sat down and I, I was like, the first thing I do is go, okay, how, how am I going to like customize the situation so that I can be me? You crank the snare. I crank the snare. <laughs> So it's extra loud. Like I just went, ring, 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 and it was like loud. So then we're louder than the amp, so really, it's so funny. So the guy came by and shut us down. I was stoked because I got to walk around the amp for the rest of the day because it stopped early, like around one or two, and I was like, cool, man. And I was like hitting this. They didn't get mad at me or anything because it wasn't really our fault per se. We were paid to play. It was my fault. It was your fault, but I was happy. But I wasn't being hired. But anyways, so Adam so anyways, shut you guys so down might, too. Adam shut us down. You and the snare drum. Both might be my fault. <laughs> you no, know, but what I was going to say is that, you know, it's it's funny that from what I heard was the main complaint was that this lady couldn't hear her TV. Ooh, it's like a Saturday. Are you serious? It's a Saturday, like early afternoon. Honey Boo Boo was on. And she couldn't hear her TV. <laughs> so that's why. I can't hear Honey Boo Boo. Wow. That's why. You know, this guy lost his job, and it's wow. like, man. If she only knew what was, like, happening and how it was, like. Yeah, I almost want to go over there and knock on her door with a snare drum. <laughs> you know, it's actually, I don't I don't blame her at all. She has a legit, well, she owns a home. Yeah, like, school. I mean, I kind of get She's it. not you know? in the know. Her mortgage is cheaper because she lives next to a school. So yeah. it's like there's some sacrifices you have to have. <laughs> yeah. but, but anyway, I, I, I blame the administration for not standing up not and saying. Not the guts. Hey, you know what? We're sorry. We'll make it up to you. We'll figure this out. Exactly. Or give her, give her some a chance. free tickets to our next show. Yeah. <laughs> and give her a chance to understand right. what's going on. They could, have, they could have talked her through it for sure. One thing I wanted to do too is shine a light. Obviously, Gannon, I mean, Mike and I have been like, and you're sitting here listening, but I don't think a lot of people know what you contributed to. Oh, yeah. What can I contribute? Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Step out of frame for a second here. So. All right. What did I do? Get this thing ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is so. I was telling Gannon earlier. He tried to put this on. I got hit by in the himself. Face. <laughs> yeah, and like it's a breach of etiquette. You never put on your own metal. And I didn't get it right. Did I get it right my neck? Oh, I did. Oh, it's right. Don't do that. That's on camera. All right. So <laughs> that. yeah. So Gannon, Gannon wrote and played um, a lot of the guitar parts in the show, and we have this wonderful guitar player, Brian. He's awesome. Super cool. And that guy did a great job. But Gannon created like this tutorial, like this YouTube tutorial on how to play <laughs> the part that was that was that you recorded for. Yeah, yeah. Which is a solo that's over the, the bass drum right. solo. Right. Right. The other the other guitar parts in the show like you wrote, like and we we took that off the off the album. Right. But it was such a cool thing because it's it's pretty virtuosic. And it's difficult for sure. <laughs> and he, the kid like went through it and like learned a tutorial. And if he didn't have that video, and it's like one of the coolest parts of the show, I think. That's um, awesome. But anyway, um, the other Dude, part. I am so stoked. About yeah, that. the other part of the the etiquette is like, once you take the metal off, uh -huh. you can't put it back on. Okay. No. So yeah. Then it's like douche status. Can I say douche status? <laughs> yeah. Douche on a podcast. Oh. That's why a lot of. So you have um, to shower with it on for a few weeks. <laughs> leave it I keep it on for a while. I go to the store with it. <laughs> I've heard like a lot of Olympians actually get upset when they have to do interviews, like on talk shows or whatever, that the, the host always wants them to come in wearing the metal. And yeah. Like, like, it's just not cool. Because like, once they put it on you, and then you know, once you moment. take it off, you don't put it back on. That's pretty, like I didn't know about all that stuff. I didn't either. It's like I mean, I, it depends on how traditional and strict you want to get, but that's yeah. kind of the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's cool. You know, I'm stoked because like, I don't get metal. I never got medals as a kid. Like, I never did anything in sports or anything. So whenever I get, whenever I get a medal, I'm like the <laughs> most stoked guy in the world. Well, like, because we got a dub award for the stuff we did with Colton. And I was like, I was so stoked to get that. I'm like, that's awesome. So this is kind of on par with that for me. I love medal. <laughs> I do. Great, I really man. think it's cool, man. It's like, it's really awesome. It's cool to get acknowledged. And I, I was happy to be a part of it, honestly. I mean, when I saw the presentation, I was like, man, this is killer. I was so blown away. So, okay, well, I appreciate that guitar it. player did an awesome job, too. 
I mean, your involvement player. was was awesome. It's really cool, like behind the scenes stuff and stuff that people don't know about that it really helped everyone come together. Yeah, and just the to bring. I mean, as a guitar player, I mean, you're like my fa favorite guitar player on the planet, and you bring so much history to what you do. Like, there's so many influences that you have that like that are historically bolstered. Yet, there's so much of you in your playing. So, like, it's like oh, a great yeah. example yeah. of if you. You come from like what? Are, what are your top few influences as a guitar player? On guitar, Holdsworth, Alan Holdsworth, Jeff Beck, Pat Metheny. That's it. Is like the top three. Yeah. There's more, but those are the guys. I mean, John McLaughlin too. Like those four guys for me are like. That's yeah. kind of my style. Is those guys together? Uh huh. So. That little bit of guitar so There's so much in that 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 it's not just notes. I mean, and it's so great that Brian. Is a good guitar player and could like. He picked up on that and he brought that out because there's a lot of stuff that you're doing where there's little taps and pull-offs that's yeah. all about left-hand touch and right-hand mm -hmm. touch and it's how you play it. Sure. I was laughing because they, like pretty much every every response to that, it was a, a bass solo moment mm -hmm. well, which was actually a duet with the guitar. Right. Mm -hmm. So bass line and, and, uh, and guitar, but it was always, oh yeah, mine's a guitar. And the bass is just like, what are we doing over Stealing here? Stealing my thunder. What are we doing? We got to ride here with bass solo. No, it was it really cool. <laughs> I, I hate to bail early. I don't know if you guys are going to continue, but I have a meeting with um, actually something to do with Broken City Percussion. Oh, great. Um, just to ensure our, our team for next year. So Thanks. I want to. It's kind of cool that we had this podcast. It's yeah. like a, a high note to a, a really cool thing. And yeah. I'm happy to be a part of it. That was really awesome. awesome. I'd like to do it again. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Dude. Yes. Nice little yes. short podcast. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Next Bye. month. Bye. Ringing sound.